the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office released some new information in a cold case, a murder almost five years old. The victim had disabilities preventing him from rotating or extending his arms. So a clay facial reconstruction may give an idea of what he may have looked like. Latino, mid to late 20s, wore tailored jeans, was between 4'11 and 5'4. Action News reporter Phil Gomez is live from Santa Cruz with more on how special investigators are trying to bring these cold cases back to life. Phil? Well, Dan, police turn to facial reconstruction when they cannot identify a John or Jane Doe through the usual methods, fingerprints, dental records, or DNA. We use so, facial reconstruction use really as a last powers. resort when we don't have any other leads in a case and we don't know we really, truly don't know who this person is. Dr. Lauren Zephro is the Santa Cruz County Forensic Services Supervisor. She's taught at both Cabrillo College and UC Santa Cruz. She works on cases where the only evidence remaining are bones, and in some cases, a few articles of clothing. Where the bodies are decomposed, burned, um, or in such a state where the bone is going to make a significant contribution to identification and or reconstructing who that person was. Here are some of the other cases Dr. Zephyr worked. In 1994, the body of an unidentified woman was found in Pogonip. She was dubbed Pogonip Jane. It took authorities 19 years to discover her identity. And this clay model is of a woman whose skull was discovered in 2008 off of Highway 9. She, too, was eventually identified. Dr. Zephro does not do the reconstruction, but provides details like ancestry, age range, and sex, so that an artist can recreate the victim's face, which can be shown to the public. It is a combination of building up, you know, for example, you have a cheekbone, which you know, your cheeks have bone underneath them to build up on, but something like the shape of your, your eyelids, this is primarily, this is all soft tissue, so there is a certain amount of um, estimation that goes, that goes into those, those features. In 2010, a victim was found dead near Casterly Road in Watsonville, killed by blunt force trauma to his head. Back in 2010, when the, when the uh, body was actually discovered, that was one method that was available to us. Um, now we're, there's different methods. Uh, currently we're working with the FBI to try to come up with an updated claimation uh, so we can use for identification purposes. Dr. Zephro says forensic techniques are changing for the better. Our techniques are constantly evolving, so we don't forget about these cases. So hopefully 100% of them will be identified, but you know, we just continue working on them until they are. The two cases mentioned earlier were Solved, Poganiv Jane was identified as Corey Joanne Lamaster. In the other case, the woman was identified and her husband was arrested for her murder. Raina Swirsky was from Fremont. Dan? All right, thank you very much, Phil. Dr. Zephro says it's important the public understand that families with missing uh, persons cases provide law enforcement with a DNA sample that's able to be kept in a state DNA base.